Now, no. in the introduction, and these are your words, they're not mine. You said that you credit your team at the chamber for making it a great place to work for over 25 years. So what do you and your leaders do to make it the best place to work at for over 25 years, mister? Well, number one, uh, the reason I credit my team is um, I'm a, a natural introvert. I'm an introvert extrovert, but my natural mm -hmm. state is introvert. And so uh, if it was left up to me, I could hang out in my office and just pound away on the computer all day and just answer everybody over email. Um, but the team here at the chamber really pushes um, the culture uh, forward. And it's through thoughtful conversations and um, an intent to want to do better and to be better and to be a great place to work uh, that they really drive all of those decisions. And it certainly pushed me out of my comfort zone. Um, and I have. I've been here for 25 years because um, I've had great mentors. I've had great people to work with. Um, you know, the leadership here aspires to do better, uh, to be better, um, and to be a leader. And that makes it really fun to be here. Um, and then outside of that, um, what we've done uh, really through COVID is through intentional conversations, um, trying to find ways that we can empower each other, how we can create more autonomy, uh, more responsibility. Um, and people really thrive in that when you give them things that they can be in charge of and that they um, excel at and really finding what people, uh, what their passion points are at work and then giving them the freedom to be themselves both here and at home. Um, and so we've just created uh, really an outstanding culture here now where we're more productive than we've ever been with more flexibility and more um, authenticity, I guess, uh, for everybody to be who they are. Those are my favorite words. So could you give us an example of, of how you were able to empower someone? Um, because that is, you know, my, my secret sauce is that if your people aren't heard or they don't feel welcome and included, you're not going to have a good culture. So obviously yours, your team does, they feel included and heard. So can you give us a specific, you know, idea that, that, comes to mind, an example, let's say. Sure, so I mean, first was, you have to serve the organization. So we um, worked through a process called the Entrepreneurial Operating System, EOS, um, and it was started here in Michigan, out of the Detroit area, which uh, I'm really proud about. It's now a worldwide phenomenon, but one of the tenets there is to create an accountability chart. And the accountability chart assigns roles and responsibilities for what processes need to get done within the organization. It's not your org chart. It's not whom reports to whom. It's um, what needs to get done and in what order and how. And um, once we figured those things out, then you know you talk to your staff and you tell them this is what the job is. This is what the role is. This is what you're responsible for, accountable to. Um, do you get it? Do you want it? And do you have capacity to do it? Um, and if you say no to any of those things, that's fine. It's not an indictment against you about uh, whether or not you're a good person. It just means that you don't fit that particular seat. And so, um, you know, not everybody um, said yes to all of those things. And um, those folks aren't necessarily here at the chamber anymore. But as um, we have hired new people or as we've evolved the organization, um, if there's a seat here that you can say yes to all three of those things, we find that you're going to be very successful and empowered because uh, you know exactly what's expected of you and we know that you know how to do it or where the training is to get it done better. Um, and so I think that's one example of where uh, once you know what's expected of you, it's very clear and you're accountable to it, you're going to do a great job at it because you care. 